What's up, Rage Nation? How's it going? This is Alex Yu, and you're watching the Marvel edition of the Rage Nation show. This is just the web series where we talk about all things that matter to me in the world of Marvel films. This is episode number 30, and we got a lot to talk about in this episode. In this episode, we're going to be doing a lot of recapping. We're going to recap on some news that has already taken place, but it's still news to me. And like I said before, I was on vacation, and a lot of new developments took place while I was gone, so I just want to recap on that. Now, the first thing I want to talk talk about in this episode is Guardians of the Galaxy and I'm sure by now you've seen Guardians of the Galaxy it was the surprise hit of the summer no big nobody expected it to be this good I watched it twice in IMAX 3D and it was worth going to watch once again because it was so awesome what a big pleasant surprise from the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Nobody expected it to be this good and nobody expected to do this well at the box office because that's what I want to talk to you about and let's just take a look back at how Guardians of the Galaxy is doing right now. Turns out that in the comic book uh, genre, Guardians of the Galaxy is on the top 10 domestic box office list. It knocked Man of Steel out of the number 10 spot and it took its place. Man of Steel was originally at $291 million. Guardians of the Galaxy overtook that spot, making it the highest grossing do uh, film domestically at the box office in 2014. This is the highest grossing film of 2014 in North America. Can you believe that? It's not a sequel. Uh, it's, it's something that nobody expected. And all the box office estimations that all of these so-called box office experts uh, uh, predicted were completely off. All right, and the first film to make three hundred million dollars in twenty fourteen, and it just keeps on staying up on top at the box office. <laughs> so it's doing really well. Now let's take a look at the list. This list, obviously, Avengers at number one. Next is Dark Knight. Dark Knight Rises follows Iron Man three, Spider Man, Spider Man two, Spider Man three, Iron Man one, Iron Man two, and now Guardians of the Galaxy. You see a little pattern going on here. We got the Dark Knight uh, franchise in here. We got the Iron Man franchise. We also have the Spider Man franchise in here. In there. But you just can't top the Avengers. The Avengers just seems to be the one that nobody can seem to beat, uh, except unless you're James Cameron. Uh, uh, but the only person who can outdo, or the only film that can outdo the Avengers is most likely the Avengers Age of Ultron, directed by Joss Whedon. But anyways, hats off to James Gunn for doing an amazing job in directing this film. Guardians of the Galaxy is now the number 10, ranked at number 10, in the, 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 the domestic box office for the comic book genre. All right, moving on, let's talk about X-Men Apocalypse. And X-Men um, Days of Future Past was totally awesome. Uh, one of my favorite films of summer of 2014. And it looks like we got an update from Brian Singer and he says that uh, shooting of X-Men Apocalypse is gonna take place in April of 2015. I don't know exactly where it's going to be filming, but at least we now know that we're going to start seeing some cameras out rolling on April of 2015, which is about right. You know, when you're trying to make a film for the next summer, you definitely want to start rolling your cameras around March, April, or May of the previous year. So that sounds about right, okay? Now, speaking of another film that is uh, from 20th Century Fox, we got a we already we all know that uh, uh, principal photography for uh, the Fantastic Four reboot has wrapped. It has wrapped up, all done. But some images got leaked out, and we've already seen the the leaked image of the thing, which looks absolutely freaking awesome. Way better than the foam suit that we saw in Fantastic Four and Fantastic Four: Rise of the Silver Surfer. This time they got it right, and now looks like. Uh, Dr. Doom, images of Dr. Doom got leaked out, but uh, he's not exactly what we would have expected. I mean, Dr. Doom in, in uh, Fantastic Four and Fantastic Four Rise of Silver Surfer looks like Dr. Doom in the comics. You can't screw him up. I mean, he looks exactly like the way he does in the comics. Maybe some things have been changed, like minor, that, you know, your average moviegoer won't pick up. But for the most part, he looks exactly the way he should look. But let's take a look at... Doctor Doom in the reboot and I think that while a lot of people are saying the thing looks awesome 
those very same people are probably saying that Dr. Doom looks like crap. Now, I'm going to reserve judgment because this is being shot in a CG environment. You can see it's green screen everywhere. So it's, a problem. it's most likely, it's obviously a, a, like a make-believe environment. So who knows, they could be in space, they could be an alien planet, they could be, you know, some, some science fiction environment, all right? But, uh, you know, his, 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 I'm pretty sure his, his costume is not complete. Uh, it's going to look better on the final films. I'm going to reserve judgment, but you do get a good idea of what he is going to look like in the film. And he looks a little bit off. I mean, like I said, the thing looks great. They know what they're doing in that department. But Doctor Doom, while I do understand that they gotta make him look different from the from the first version of Fantastic Four, doesn't look like he's he looks that much better. <laughs> now um, here are the images. They they look kind of crazy. But that's all I gotta say for you with regards to Fantastic Four. What do you guys think about that? Now, the last thing I want to talk about is Captain America 3. Now, I'm sure most of the diehard fans by now should have Captain America the Winter Soldier on Blu-ray. I picked it up. I watched it yesterday. It was awesome. But it turns out, I found out that Jeremy Renner, Hawkeye, the character of Hawkeye was supposed to appear in the original script of Captain America the Winter Soldier. He didn't make the cut. Uh, his character got cut out. And uh, it, it left them completely out of the story, 100%. Uh, Black Widow stayed in there. Nick Fury is obviously in there. They, they introduced Falcon, but no signs of Hawkeye at all. Okay. It looks like Hawkeye is going to make that appearance in Captain America 3. And uh, that was confirmed by the, uh, the Russo brothers. Because they were talking about how he was supposed to have uh, scenes in, uh, in the second film, Winter Soldier, looks like they're going to do him that honor, or justice rather, by bringing him in, in Captain America 3. That is very, very exciting. I was already excited to know that Black Widow, a character who appeared in, or rather was introduced in Iron Man 2, appeared once again in the Avengers, and also appeared again in Winter Soldier, uh, uh, you know, made that appearance. I, I, I was already excited about that. Just to know that there is this link between these characters in their films. I mean, these films are all very different. Thor is a very different film from Captain America, The Winter Soldier, but they all share the same universe. And it's great to know that even though they feel like separate films, they've gone their separate ways after the Avengers, there is still something that ties them all together. And that is S.H.I.E.L.D., Nick Fury, Black Widow, supporting characters like those. Even cameos uh, uh, from Robert Downey Jr., Chris Evans, and, 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 and uh, Mark Ruffalo in the credits scene or wherever. Easter eggs. It doesn't matter. Okay? The fact is that there's the one thing that ties them all together. And that is these, uh, these little uh, these character moments. And what's so awesome to know is that a major character, even though he's a supporting character, but still a major character, like... Clint Barton, Hawkeye, is going to appear in Captain America 3. Most likely, Winter Soldier is also going to appear. After all, he signed a seven-picture deal. Sebastian Stan has signed a seven-picture deal. But uh, if Hawkeye is truly in Captain America 3, I'm excited. I was already super excited with the Win uh, Captain America to Winter Soldier because it was such an awesome film. I want to see where it continues, how it continues... If Hawkeye is going to be in Captain America 3, obviously they're a team. They're going to be helping each other. Does that also mean that Black Widow is also going to be there as well, along with Falcon? That's going to make for a great team. And you know what's really cool? Captain America, Black Widow, Nick Fury, and, and Falcon are characters in the, the these films that are grounded heroes. I wouldn't call them exactly heroes per se, but at least they're protagonist characters that aren't characters that are like Iron Man, Thor, Hulk, who are, who have out of this world abilities. So, you know, Black Widow and Hawkeye, Nick Fury, they're the most grounded of these supporting characters. So it's cool to know that in Captain America, even though he's part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, he still has his own universe. And that is a more grounded, realistic version of itself. 
okay? So they're not fighting aliens, they're fighting with domestic terrorism or, 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 or terrorists who don't rely on superhuman abilities. You know what I'm saying? So it's really cool. I just wanted to share my excitement with you guys to know and, and knowing that Hawkeye is going to make an appearance in Captain America 3. That's all I got to say in this video. Anyways, how do you guys feel about Dark Doom's new costume? And how do you feel about Hawkeye appearing in Captain America 3? Who would you like to see appear in Captain America 3? There's still plenty of room for more new characters. So let me know in the comment section below. And if you have anything to say about anything that I've talked about, also share with me in the comment section below. As always, if you enjoyed this video, hit the like button, subscribe to the YouTube channel, like me on Facebook, The Rage Nation. Also follow me on Twitter, at Rage Nation. I got Instagram. You can check out my photos on Instagram, at The Rage Nation. My name is Alex. I'll see you next time. Peace. Is Transformers Age of Extinction, a movie that I've seen seven times in the theater. Being a Transformers fan, I enjoyed it. Um, 